Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris Dell with a short video today. Uh, I was actually uh, watching Tom Scott's channel, where he uh, he are he had a video recently published called "Why You Can't Name a File Con in Windows." This is actually uh, not true. You can name a file con in Windows. Let's listen to the first intro first. And I, I love Tom, by the way. I've been uh, Scott uh, Tom Scott. I've been subscribed to his channel for many years. However, let's see. Call it con. Not gonna let you do it. All right. All right. So we're so he will explain why you can't create these files uh, because they're actually device names and so on. Uh, let's create a folder here called Tom. Let's put in. Let's try to create a file. Echo test into con. Did not work. Lowercase con did not work. So there are actually these reserved names. Echo lpt1 for example. Uh, echo test into lpt1. It's also reserved. So we have aux, con, lpt, basically reserved file names that you're not supposed to use. And as Tom is explaining brilliantly, by the way, in his video, uh, he explains the history and why they're there for legacy and backwards compatibility to device drivers and basically devices. Um, there is actually ways to create these files. Uh, one way is to basically reference the full namespace of a of your system. So what we can do is we can do echo test, redirect this into slash slash dot slash. You can also do a question mark here. So we'll do dot slash c colon slash temp slash tom slash call it con. There. Now you can see that I have the file con. Also, con dot jpeg, con dot text. So you can see that I can very much create these files, no problem. Uh, I can actually create a legit JPEG. I don't have to just put text into this. So let me open up this folder here in my Explorer. So let's go to temp, Tom, bring it over to the other screen here. So here I have an actual JPEG. Now I can basically there type, let's see, Roland here, redirect this into slash that dot slash sequence slash Tom. Tom, con, JPEG. And you'll see that it actually holds all the data. No problem, it will actually hold the data. And I can't open it, however. So I cannot take now con and double click it. Now this will just give me a black image. Won't allow it to open the file. However, what I can do is I can do type. Well, actually, um, I can do, yeah, sure. I can do type slash slash dot slash, c colon slash, temp, tom, con, JPEG can redirect this, in, this into copy JPEG, and you now see I have a legit copy. Now, pretty interesting stuff. Now, this gets even more interesting when we mix in what we call alternating data streams. So alternating data streams is basically a feature of uh, NTFS, the file system that Windows is currently using, and it allows us to attach more files to one file. So one file can actually hold other files. I can see alternating data streams with the dir forward slash r command here. So even though in Explorer, I can only see one, two, three, four, five files, on my command line here, when I do it with a forward slash r, you can actually see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six files. And this extra file here, 205 bytes, is called the same file name as its parent here, but it has a colon here separating an alternating data stream and it contains a file called zone identifier. So this basically, this zone identifier, I can view it with this command here. Type doesn't know about alternating data streams. However, redirect operators do. And you can see that it actually contains information like where I downloaded this picture from. And I downloaded it from unsplash.com. Beautiful website, tons of free images that you can use. So I can see the alternating data streams with dir for slash r and with PowerShell, I can do get item star and this will get the, all, all of the files in the directory. Then I can do streams star, uh, actually that's just stream. Oh, actually it refuses to show us, look at this, just because I have the con file name here in the folder, it refuses to show us alternating data streams. It just fails on its head. Uh, let's create a directory called tom2. And from here, let's create now an alternating data stream. So test into test.txt, and then we'll create secret.txt here. 
So let's see if we can find this alternate data stream now. We can see it with Durfo slash R, but let's try with PowerShell. Let's do get item star, then let's do stream star. And you can very easily see that now PowerShell will show us that there is an alternate data stream. But when I was in the folder Tom here, and I do the same command, PowerShell just breaks. It refuses to show the old name data streams. So this is actually quite interesting because there is an alternate data stream inside of this file here. But what if I put an alternate data stream inside of any of these? For example, what if I put in a backdoor or a secret picture or maybe some secret missile launch codes, right? Which is going to be this this magical sequence here, and I'll redirect this into an alternating data stream inside of con. Con here, for example, then we'll do colon, which will separate the alternating data streams from the rest. We'll do secret.txt. There are, the command still works, it will reveal us this alternating data stream, but it doesn't look like con is holding any more data. It still says it's eight bytes big and it doesn't hold any data. But does it really though? Does it, didn't it work or not? Did it actually work or did it not? Let's try, let's do more or we can use sort. Sort also knows about alternating data streams. We'll do slash slash dot slash, c colon slash, temp slash, um, tom, con, secret dot txt. And there they are. The secret missile launch codes are inside of con. There is just no way for you to reveal them using traditional means. So we can try again with PowerShell. We can do get item, we can see that we have the files. The moment we add stream star or stream star, it just doesn't work. So um, I loved a lot of Tom Scott, beautiful videos he has. However, this time he was wrong. We can't create these files. All right, cheers, bye-bye.